Hello everyone, it's Melanie. Um, yeah, it's Melanie. So, I kind of stacked some things up around me that uh, to show you some stuff I had worked on recently. <clears throat> um, but honestly, for the past couple of weeks, I have literally been watching um, press briefings and press conferences and for some reason I just can't seem to look away from all this bad news um, and I am a very very anxious person and there's probably isn't anything worse that I could be doing than you know sitting around watching this stuff but for some reason I'm just like compelled to feel up to the minute on, you know, what's going on. <clears throat> so, um, yesterday I really made a, an effort to try to do something other than um, play the new game, my new Animal Crossing on my Nintendo Switch, or watch press briefings and press conferences. So, I thought I'd just show you some of the things that I have kind of worked on, but honestly, I have not done very much at all uh, in the past couple weeks. Um, these are the little patches that I was making uh, from the Kelly Mae Krenz class um, and some more that I started on that I don't think you've seen. They just have, you know, stitching. I can't see the camera. Stitching, stitching all over them. Uh, I have some of this fabric that has like these snowflake kind of images on it. And I thought that that would be fun to sort of use that um, snowflakey image <clears throat> and kind of make like a mandala or something on there. So I started on that one. And what I've been doing with a lot of these is I'll just go back and forth. Like I'll work on, you know, I'll work, I, this one just has three places that it's got stitching on it. So I'll work on it and then when I'm kind of sick of it, I'll switch over and work on this one and then I'll work on this one and I just keep kind of going back and forth. That way, um, there's always, you know, if I get stuck on one, I can just move to another one. Here's the little um, tea bag pocket that we made in the class and I stitched it to um, a backing. I really like that. And then here's a couple more. I don't think you've seen these. And they're just covered with stitching. <clears throat> I really like these. And let's see, then I did this. I, I think I posted this on Instagram before it was finished. Um, I had done it with two layers. There's a, a muslin on top and then there was a layer of vintage muslin. Uh, may have even been flower sack on the bottom. And what I was originally gonna do was trim the top muslin out like this around the edges and then leave the, the base muslin as the background. But sometimes I do this, I don't know what the deal is. Sometimes I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, well, I think it's finished. I'm gonna trim it out. And I started cutting and I cut through the, the flower sack fabric that was on the back. So I ended up just cutting the entire thing out and then I stitched it down on this. Part of me thinks, <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just because I'm, you know, I studied fashion design in the 90s. Um, if you remember 90s fashion, I mean, I, I could do anything with a shoulder pad. Um, but what I kind of want to do with this is like finish the edge with a satin stitch, like a patch, and put it on my denim jacket. You know? I don't know. Anyway, so there's that one also. And then I was working with this cover that I had finished, um, I had a back for it and then I came across this fabric in my stash. This is just a piece of linen, really bright piece of linen. And I thought, ooh, that's so bright and crazy that that would go good with that. So I'm working this into, um, into a cover. Um, not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with it. I just did a blanket stitch to stitch the layers together and I still have to stitch the top. Um, and then I have some of this left. I love this fabric. It's a micro corduroy 
uh, I think I made a dress for my daughter out of it when she was little. So anyway, I worked on that. And then I did watch uh, Rachel's video where she was doing um, the altered book and she had some pieces of stitching uh, that her mom had done and there was one that she put on the front of a book that had a heart on it and I had ordered this book in the mail the other day and it just came and so I was literally looking through this book when I saw um, Rachel's video where she was <coughs> doing the little uh, gluing kind of a piece of this onto the front of uh, of a an altered book so I was I had started on this because I had gotten that stitched memories book and then I saw Rachel's video and um, <clears throat> that gave me the idea to put a heart on it because her piece that she put on the book had a heart and I thought the heart was really cute so I made this heart originally but it covered up too much so I decided to make another one but this is just another little slow stitching whatnot I'm not sure what I'll do with it and a little heart Okay, so I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna show you that just yet. That's a different animal. The other thing I am ordered recently on Amazon, I had purchased, I think I get DMC emails, and they had, um, when they came out with this etoile, um, which is French for star, when they came out with this etoile um, floss, I ordered a, a small pack of it uh, when it was new, and I love it. It's got like lurex or metallic in it, and it's really pretty to put with, um, I mean, I've seen a lot of people do like cross stitch and stuff with it where you're stretching it really tight. I personally really like it loose, and because the, the, um, the strands themselves have a lot of texture to them. So I have these because when I got the email, I was like, oh, I want some of that. So I bought a little thing directly from DMC, uh, and, but they also had this, this tin, collector's tin of all the colors, but it was like $80, $69 or $79. But now this is on sale from DMC and DMC on Amazon. And it was half price, so it was, um, I think it was like $38. And it's got all 35 colors of this um, etoile in it. So I ordered it from Amazon just because um, it would come a little faster than ordering it from DMC. So here's, let's see, it came with some little patterns color card on the back and so that comes out on these that comes out to you know um, just a tiny bit over a dollar per skein of this really pretty stuff and then you've got the the tin on top of that so I guess I could go ahead I've been keeping this in a something from the grocery store. I guess I could go ahead and put these in this tin and I can find some other use for this. Anyway, now I have all 35 colors and I can't wait to experiment with and um, play with those. So I just thought I would show you that. put the other stuff back in there. Well, I might not need that if I put, I'll just put that in there. Save the foam for something else. So yesterday, I was when I decided, okay, I'm not gonna watch stuff. I'm not gonna watch press conferences, which some of them I have to say, at the very beginning of this, when this whole thing started, I was watching every single press conference. Every governor, every um, province in Canada, 
I was really hooked on watching Justin Trudeau because you have to kind of skip around when he does press briefing live. You have to kind of skip around because um, when he speaks French, some of the channels on YouTube, somebody will start translating over him. And so you have to find a channel that's like actually from Montreal or, or from, from Quebec so that you can actually, so that they'll leave him untranslated when he speaks French. So I was loving listening to Justin Trudeau because um, first of all, his voice when he speaks English, when he's finished being prime minister, I will buy every single book, audio book that he narrates. He just has such a fabulous voice. I just, I like his voice. And, and then when he speaks French, he speaks very clearly. He enunciates, he speaks, you know, not slowly, but he speaks a lot slower than when I try to watch French movies, you know, and, and understand the French. So anyway, I can understand and read a decent amount of French. I can speak enough to survive, but I love, I just, I love listening to it. So I was really hooked on Justin Trudeau because um, his French, and it was so cool because he would say something in English or in French, and then he would say it, and I could listen and get the whole gist of what he was talking about and understand. And then he would say that same, you know, the same basic thing not word for word, but he'd say the same thing in English. So, I don't know, I was really hooked on watching Justin Trudeau speak French. So then yesterday I thought, okay, I'm not gonna watch any more of this stuff. Um, we also got some, I mean, I almost hate to say bad news because bad news is kind of a relative term, but, um, Nobody died that I know. But just some, you know, with the markets the way they're going and um, the economy kind of stuff. And my husband is self-employed. And one of our income sources is um, a number of uh, Airbnbs that my husband has put together and maintains. And we, when this all started, uh, we were getting just multiple cancellations every day. Um, but you know, we still have to maintain the properties. Anyway, I don't wanna talk, about, I don't know. I haven't talked about it to anybody else, so I don't know, there's part of me that wants to talk about it, but anyway, we'll all get through this. Um, so there are a number of, well I say a number, there's one, Josefina, I, no, I don't, I don't have her name. Uh, Josefina Allendez, um, she's in Chile, and I follow her on Instagram, and she does this really dimensional, beautiful, bright embroidery, and um, so I was looking at her Instagram, and then I saw somebody else's, and I thought, oh, I could try that, I could do, so this one girl had done watercolor, and then combined it with embroidery. So I tried, this right here is watercolor. I tried watercoloring on this. And this is another piece of that really old muslin that might, actually it probably is flower sack because see that, see those holes right there on the edges? That's where it was changed, chain stitched uh, when it was a feed sack right there. See it? So it is, a, it is an old flower feed sack. So at first I tried um, watercolor and I wasn't sure how much and it, it really bled so I didn't like that. And then I just colored on this with some markers. These are those Tombow brush markers. So I just colored on it with the markers and then I started doing some embroidery over the top of it um, with yarn. So it's really chunky and really dimensional and I didn't really have anything I was going on. And literally when I was standing there, you know, drawing this on I was just kind of like Rrr. so you know following these colors that I laid down may not make a whole lot of sense I don't know so I did this for a while and I thought okay well this is this is kind of cool um 
but I couldn't decide, I don't know. So I decided to switch it up and I thought I'm gonna try something a little more abstract. So I was looking for a loosely woven, like linen or cotton, um, like an Osnaberg or a, um, anyway, the only thing I could find besides um, burlap was this monk's cloth that I have. So I hooped it up and started doing some embroidery with yarn, uh, this kind of abstract thing just sort of building out from the middle. And um, this was a lot of fun. I've enjoyed working on it, on this part. I really love it. This monk's cloth, hate it. I hate, hate, hate the way it looks. And I don't like working on it. So when I was preparing for this video, the next thing I was gonna do, and this is exactly why my entire sewing room is littered with half done projects. Because I start something like this, I do it and I'm like, okay, so this is how it's gonna go. I figured it, so now I have an idea, okay, the next one's gonna be better. So this gets tossed aside. But I don't wanna throw it away because I might need it later for some inspiration or something. So then I start on this one. And I do it for a while. And I'm like, oh, this is fun, this is cool. But I don't like this background fabric. Whoop, throw it away, you know, toss that to the side. So my next idea was to, I took a, a canvas um, frame and ripped the canvas off of it. This is kind of stuff that if I could go to the store right now, I wouldn't have to, you know, pilfer frames from other things. But this is just a store-bought canvas, and then I ripped the front off of it. And I did find this fabric that I thought I would use. So this is more, okay, I think I'm talking a million miles an hour. I like I mean, though you know, you've seen you've seen how people will do these embroideries in a hoop and then display it in the hoop. It's cute. I just think it's kind of unfinished. Um, it feels a little bit unfinished to me. So, I, I would like another way to display this. So my idea was to take apart a canvas, which is what I did, and then I found this uh, fabric, which may be Osnaberg. I can't tell. No because it's a double weave. So I just ironed it out. I traced my um, frame on the back there, and then I stitched over where I traced my frame so that I could have, it's kind of hard to see, I could have a line. So this is where I know my, um, my frame will fit. So my idea here was to start another embroidery and this is kind of off grain. You know, I think this is an unbleached canvas. So I was thinking then this time I do my work inside this rectangle and then when I'm finished, I'll actually just mount it to the frame just like you would um, with a can or you know, like you'd mount a canvas. So that was my next idea and I thought uh, I had it sitting here and then I sat this on top of it, thinking what I was gonna show you in the video, and I was like, ooh, I wonder if I could transfer this to this. So here's my idea, here's what I'm gonna do. Maybe a total disaster, but in my opinion at this point, this is kind of a total disaster because I don't like that backing fabric. I don't like it on that monk's cloth at all. So I had some other stitching that I had done up here that I took out because it was kind of open and you could see the monk's cloth through it. And what I'd been doing here was covering all of it. So I have an idea and I'm going to see if it's gonna work. My idea is this. If I can trim this monk's cloth and then stitch this onto this fabric and then finish it in here, then I can mount it on the frame and it would be, you know, more like an actual finished piece. So the first thing I need to do, I guess, I mean, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I may just be, 
I may just be completely ruining it, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna trim it, I'm gonna cut it out. And this monk's cloth, if you don't know what it's like, it's a it's a four by four weave cotton. Um, I don't even know exactly 100% what all it's used for, but I think it's used in cross stitch and stuff. So I'm not, I was, I can't trim it all the way to the edge, I don't think. Hmm, what if I did? I don't want to trim it so close that I don't want to trim it so close that I have to deal with all these little things sticking up. But let's see. So I've been talking all about me. I hope you guys are good. If you're in somewhere that's been really hard hit by this virus. I hope that you and yours are staying safe. Um, here in North Texas, it's here, but it's, you know, I mean, I look at the numbers in Italy and I think, good grief, you know, it's here, but it's not, it's not that bad. It's not like it is in other places, not like New York or, you know, and I don't know how much it's going to help, but it is, um, Spring is over. I like to joke about that because that's what it's like to live in Texas. We get, you know, maybe, maybe two weeks of spring when the temperatures are in the 60s and 70s, maybe. And then, boop, it's over. Um, it's in the 80s and 90s. So, I'll say that's gonna be the top. So I kind of put it here. Oh, you know what else I'll need to do? Once I stitch this on here, I'm gonna need to trim out the back of it so it doesn't, so it's not raised up like that. This, this may not work at all. It was just an idea. So let me figure out how I wanna stitch this down. So my husband, who I mentioned is self-employed, he's, my husband is a real estate broker and home builder. Um, and so he builds and remodels houses. Is, and um, construction, where we are, even though we are in a shelter in place, you know, we're supposed to be sheltering in place, construction is considered essential. So a lot of his job sites and stuff are um, people, you know, these guys want to go to work. These construction guys want to go to work. So he's been having to go out and kind of make his rounds to his job sites while staying, staying away from people as much as, you know, as much as possible. Um, makes me nervous because then he comes back home to my daughter and I and you know if we're gonna get it my daughter and I haven't haven't let the only place that I've been since all this started what that second week of March or whatever the only place I've been is the grocery store and then I also went to um, to Target and we did the drive up where you you drive up and and then they bring your stuff out to the car um, and that was on actually that was the 20 that was on the 20th because that was the day that Animal Crossing came out <clears throat> and we went to Target that morning and got Animal Crossing the game and they brought it out to the car so I've been to Kroger twice since all this started and I've been to Target and that's, and I didn't, didn't even get out of the car at Target. I mean, honestly, this whole, <laughs> this whole shelter in place 
stay home. It's like, nobody has to tell me twice to stay home. I mean, it's kind of not like anything even changed for me as far as staying home because that's what I do anyway. You know, I'm, um, you know, the only difference for me is literally like, you know, I started this project and I was like, didn't have the right fabric. And I thought, you know, oh, I can't go get, I don't need to go out and go shopping. So I didn't go get any fabric. And that's why I used this yucky monk's cloth. Hmm. This may or may not work. I wonder if I'd be better off to try to stitch around the edge and then fray it like this. And that could even become, I could either, hmm. I think I'm gonna do that. I also think that this needle is way too big and my thread is way too long. So instead of trying to turn it under like I just did there, The other thing is, it's kind of like, what is that need that fabric uh, that you embroider on and then you take it apart, you know? So that, I can't think of what that fabric is called. Okay, new plan. Yeah, this might this might have been a really bad idea. Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that what I could do is like these types of videos are probably so frustrating to watch because you probably know exactly what I should do, but you can't tell me, you know? You're sitting here thinking, oh, why doesn't she just, you know, do X, Y, Z? What I'm thinking, oh, see, now that already, I took that apart. What I'm kind of thinking is, what if instead of stitching this down, what if I just start doing some other embroidery on top of this to try to secure it, uh, secure it that way? I'll definitely need to trim the back of it out because it's really lumpy. Let me see what would happen if instead of, what if I just started going over it? So these yarns are mostly, they're all leftover um, yarns from knitting projects and, st and stuff. Yarn scraps. And I'm using, this as a tapestry needle, so it, <clears throat> it doesn't have a sharp point. But on this, on a loosely woven cloth like this, it's, it's fine. So see, this is what I'm kind of wondering, if I could just do it like this, just sort of, and maybe the, the monk's cloth, if or where or whatever, it kind of shows through. It's just, you know, it's just part of it because that's how it was originally put together. That's kind of what I was thinking. That in, maybe instead of trying to sew it on like that, I could just kind of stitch over the edge. Yeah, this may be a complete disaster. But like I said, I didn't like it on the monk's cloth anyway, so it would have just ended up 
sitting in a box. This I'm just kind of filling in with some chain stitches as if they were maybe leaves or something. And I, I don't know, I, did, I have gotten some comments when I do this stitching. I have gotten some comments, could I zoom in a little further? And I guess I could, let me see. The only problem with zooming in further is that I have, I can't see when I'm in my sewing room, the setup that I have, I can't see, um, I can't see my camera. So, um, I don't know if I'm in frame or not. That's why I don't, that's why I don't usually, that's why I don't zoom in further because I can't tell if I'm, if I'm on screen or if I get off screen, I can't tell. So my daughter, of course, she came home the Wednesday of her spring break and then was stuck here. So my daughter's been home for a week and a half or so. That makes it a little harder to record a video too because We've kind of been hanging out. And I, I like hanging out with her. Oh, that's a problem. I actually tidied up and put away my yarn. So let me get this out. This, I usually don't work with such chunky pieces of yarn, but to get this really textured look, this is, this is cruel wool. Am I even, am I in frame? Let's see. See, that's gonna be loose after I that little loop right there is loose. Here's my, I think I'm gonna pin it up here out of the way. And then I'm just gonna stitch. Over here I was doing like three stitches. I can't remember what that's called. It's like three. So I'm just gonna go under here and start securing this. And then just stitch out over the edge of that monk's cloth. And then I can fold that piece back down over it, secure that. The thing I don't know is once I is that even holding? Oh, I only, I was like, that's not holding, but I didn't actually do it there, so. My only concern with doing this is that when I have to trim out the back of this cloth, the background fabric, when I have to trim that, that it will be really weak and pull apart. I don't want it to do that. Because I'm only kind of stitching over these, this monk's cloth, I'm not really stitching through it. This these sequins right here, this is some old, some really old from the 60s sequins that I have. And they're kind of a, they're blue on one side, but then the inside is this kind of yellowish, I don't know. They're really pretty, but I put them there with um, some gold seed beads and I thought it turned out really, really cool looking. 
what's this doing on the back? I closed the door to my room to record and my dogs are literally sitting outside the door. Every once in a while he'll scratch on the door. Let me in. The dogs are probably thinking, oh my goodness, are they ever going to leave the house? Are they ever going to go anywhere? Which my husband does leave every day, but... So, uh, I don't know. I may have just totally wasted it. Hmm, you know what I should have done? I should have not cut it back so far and then machine stitched it on and then just smoothed it out and like embroidered over it, which I could still do. I could still machine stitch this down. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Here's what I did. I stitched, machine stitched as close as I could to the actual stitching, which of course, in hindsight, I could have done this, stitch it down before I trimmed away any of the monk's cloth, which probably would have been a much better solution. So, but you know, that's, oh, that's the way it goes. Let me put this, cause I'm gonna turn it over and cut out the back of this so it's not so lumpy. So now, because this is all lumped up, I need to cut, oh, I didn't stitch there. I'll be back. Okay, I'll try this one more time. I didn't stitch right there, but it's just gonna have to be the way it is. So now I want to cut this out. Use a smaller scissors. I'm gonna cut this out, leaving a bit of a margin there so it doesn't unravel. Guess we could call this a thinking out loud video or a problem solving. And I may need to put this in a hoop since save those for later so that way it's flat now this that's the top I did make that mark on there to remind myself that that was the top that's up so now it's laying flat ish so I can either go in and, and I did, I just stitched right over this and then I'll just put more stitches on it. But what I'm thinking is then I can go and just do this kind of stitching. So like this entire area right here, I'll just do some, um, stitching over the edges like this to to cover that up, to cover that monk's cloth and that stitching.
oops, oh my goodness, how much easier would this have been if I had just started on this fabric? Which I think this is, this is a canvas, because it's a, it's a double, really lightweight double canvas. Yeah, it would have been so much easier, so much easier. You know, I like to make things as difficult as possible for myself sometimes. But that's how you learn. You know, you can do a satin stitch by, um, you can either go, you know, let's say this is side A and this is side B. Am I on screen? This is A, this is B. So say you start at A, go over the top to B, then underneath you go from B under the cloth back to A. So you, what you're ending up with is long stitches on both sides. You can also, you know, go through like this and then instead of, um, we'll say like this, and then instead of coming up on the other side, if this were the right side, instead of coming up here, which is going to make, you know, stitches on both sides, you could go through right next to that stitch on the same side. And then you don't end up with nearly as much wasted fabric. The only problem with that is that then you have, no matter what you do, even if you only skip one thread, which you have to, to not go back through the same hole, then you end up with this space right there between them. And I don't like that. So that's why I'm doing the, that's why I'm doing my stitches so that um, it wastes a lot of yarn or thread doing it this way because you've got thickness on the front and the back, but I think it lies so much cleaner. Um, and especially when I was doing this yesterday, working on just the monk's cloth and I was trying to cover the cloth as much as possible. Um, that other way wasn't working at all. So in case you're wondering why I'm doing it one way versus the other. This kind of reminds me of um, like coral, like a coral reef or something. Am I on? But once I do all of this, I can go back and like here where I stitched over this, I could go back and just stitch you know, just keep stitching all over it until it's just covered. And I stitched, so let's see. And I'll let you go in a minute. This has to be really boring. I just wanted to, I've been telling myself every day, I need to make a video, I need to make a video. My mom even commented on one of my videos and said, time for a new video. And then she sent me a text. Or maybe she told me over the phone. I think it's time for you to make another video. Don't you love it how when I do my mom's voice, I always make her sound like I'm in trouble. She's not like that, my mom is so sweet. Is that three or is that two? That's only two. Give me the one more. I will say the one thing about the monk's cloth that was nice is you can see it, which is why I think I might need to put this in a frame. Maybe that's why that's not looking. Maybe I need to put it in a frame or a hoop. What about the hoop it came out of? That works. back in the hoop. Yeah, 
that doesn't... Doesn't look as good as it did on the monk's cloth, but I guess maybe this will help having it stretched. But once I get this on, I can also, once the monk's cloth is out of the way, you know, covered up, I could do something else on top of it. Because now I have two, this section and that section both go the same direction. If I can pull this off, I will be really glad because I'm loving the way this is coming together, but that monk's cloth is just, ugh. How many, I wonder how many times I've said monk's cloth in this video. I realized something watching back a couple of my videos I realized that I sniffle a lot in my videos and I don't have the sniffles I don't have allergies but I had a revelation if you could see me right now I'm wearing a pair of reading glasses and they are literally sitting on the very tip of my nose you see that? They're sitting on the tip of my nose. So when they sit there on my nose, it makes my nose run because I can't breathe. So the reason I think that I sniffle all the time is because my reading glasses are, are closing my nose up. So... I need to push my glass, push my reading glasses back up. But then if I push my reading glasses up, I can't see anything that's, you know, further away than these aren't bifocals. They're just reading glasses. I have a pair of bifocals and they literally make me feel they're awful. But they're, I guess because they're not trifocals and they put some correction in the top of them that I don't think I needed. So, hmm. where's the rest of this? Is that it? No. What did I do with it? I haven't taken stuff out of here. Where's that, where's that yarn? That's not it. Is that? That's not it either. Oh, I should have known better than to tidy up. Well, I guess that's gonna be it for right now for me guys, because I actually didn't realize that I, put all my yarn and stuff away so um, I'm gonna keep working on this a little bit if I'm perfectly honest I'm probably gonna go um, go check the news maybe I'll see if Justin Trudeau was on anyway I hope you guys are doing well and um, sorry I've been gone so long you know, I don't know. Kind of in a way, just didn't want to talk to anybody, even the camera. Does that make sense? So. You guys take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.